Nadal out with a bad knee. He will not defend his Wimbledon title. Hey there, welcome to you. So glad to have you with us. Lauren Shahadi, along with CBS Sports' Ian Eagle. Ian Nadal withdrawing from the grass court Grand Slam tournament, becoming just the second men's champion in 35 years to decline uh, to decline to defend that Wimbledon title. And one thing, one thing is for sure, we will not see the final. We saw these last three years must be very disappointing for Rafael Nadal. I think it is. I think it's disappointing for Nadal. I think it's disappointing for the tennis world, Lauren, because uh, let's face it, when you've got a juicy storyline like this one for a sport that is always looking for the next big thing to attract an audience, uh, this is a major hit. But with that said, it does open up the door for somebody else to possibly step through. I would say Andy Murray is the biggest beneficiary of this injury to Nadal. Obviously, Roger Federer with a chance to make history, uh, winning his 15th major championship. And unfortunately for Nadal, I think there are some changes that have to take place in the offing. The way he prepares himself, uh, the constant stress that he puts his body through, uh, reportedly five hours of practice a day to get ready uh, to be the player that he wants to be. But uh, I think there, there probably have to be some adjustments down the road for Nadal and his team. Nadal says, when I start a tournament like Wimbledon, I, and I aim to finish it. I can certainly understand that. You mentioned Roger Federer. That's a seamless transition. Uh, looking for his record-breaking 15th Grand Slam. Does he just coast there now in your eyes, Ian? No, I, I don't think he coasts. Obviously, uh, the French Open, I was there. I, I got to witness history as it was developing at Roland Garros. And I know for Federer, uh, that absolutely put some of the naysayers off to the side and trust me there there were people within the tennis community that were questioning whether or not Roger Federer had lost his fastball so to speak and uh, now Federer is the overwhelming favorite to win Wimbledon but I don't think he coasts to a championship he is tremendous on the surface we know that as good as Nadal has been on red clay Federer has been equally as good on the grass at Wimbledon until Nadal uh, was able to beat him last year in an epic final with that said uh, I mentioned Andy Murray earlier. I still believe Murray, this could be the breakthrough moment for him at a Grand Slam tournament. To do it in England, to do it in his homeland would be uh, such a huge, huge boost uh, for that area of the world. And uh, you know what? Andy Roddick as well. I think uh, the fact that Nadal will not be a part of it, it gives Roddick maybe a little bit of hope on that side of the draw to feel like he could have a strong couple of weeks at the All England Club. You mentioned that epic final last year. We saw Federer reduced to tears. A lot of hype surrounding the rematch, so to speak, this year. Let me ask you this, Ian. If Federer does win, is it a yeah, but conversation? I think in the short term, there might be some, some cynics that look at it that way. But I think long term, Roger Federer will be remembered as the greatest player of all time, greatest all-around player to do it on all four, four surfaces, even uh, at a tournament like the French Open when Nadal did not get to the championship because of Robin Soderling and probably because of his knees. Uh, I think 10, 20 years uh, out from this moment, we're still going to look back at Roger Federer as uh, the champion that he was, and nobody is going to bring up the fact that Nadal had uh, knee trouble at the French Open in 2009 and then uh, couldn't even play at Wimbledon. Uh, history will remember Roger Federer fondly, and I don't think Nadal's issues physically will be anything but a footnote. What about Americans in this draw? You mentioned Andy Roddick, James Blake. Do they make a dent at all, Ian? Well, you know, it's funny. Because of Nadal and the injury, it's Juan Martin Del Potro, the number five seed, that moves into Nadal's spot on that portion of the draw. The draw had already been made, so they're not going to redo the draw based on the fact that Nadal is now not a part of it. And that means James Blake actually slips into Juan Martin Del Potro's spot as the number five seed. He's not the fifth seed. He's still the 17 seed, but he assumes his place on the draw. So uh, there's an opening there for Blake to maybe make some noise, uh, although uh, I just haven't seen the consistency from him, especially on this surface, to believe that he can make an extended run. Roddick, I, I, I do think he's playing better tennis. I think he's just at a good point in his life, personally, professionally, uh, where he has a chance to to make some noise at the All England Club. Uh, obviously, he's never won the championship there. He has one Grand Slam to his credit. That's the U.S. Open. And uh, I think Roddick deep down believes he has another Grand Slam in him. His timing in life just wasn't all that good to, to come around the same time as Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Beyond that, uh, Marty Fish is dangerous on the surface because of that booming serve. 
Uh, you've got Robbie Ginepri. You've got Sam Query, but uh, all in all, no, you, you don't have a whole lot of American representation that can uh, make a serious run at a Wimbledon championship. We will see how it all works out. Of course, CBSSports.com will be with you every step of the way. Nadal out with a bad knee. He will not defend his Wimbledon title. Ian Eagle, thanks for your time. Lauren, a pleasure. We'll talk to you down the road. All right, all your coverage right here on the site. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you real soon.